Hi there and welcome to another Sonic Academy tech tip with me, Phil Johnston. Uh, this one's really, really cool. Um, I was digging about on the internet um, on my quest to find some um, formant filters. and Just sort of, I was um, looking at uh, what options were available and I came across um, a table um, that I spotted on a YouTube video. And basically what it does, it gives you um, a set of EQ curves that represent uh, the different sort of vial sounds that you get from formant filters and the, the vial sounds that you make in your sort of in your mouth when you um, make the shape for an A or an O or an I or a U or an E and what we can do in Ableton is then create filters based on this using um, a bunch of bandpass filters. So I've created um, four here, and I'll let you hear what they sound like, and then we'll go in and I'll show you how they were made. So we've got an AI filter. And then we have an AO filter. IO and then an AU so what we'll do I'll create one of these from scratch and show you how it's made so first we start off um, I'll get rid of these ones here and we'll start off with a clean page so we start off with an auto filter and we're going to grip it into an effect track. And then what we want to do is map the frequency and the gain to um, a macro. So we're going to right click, map to macro one, map to macro one. And then we're switching it to bandpass and we'll turn the resonance up full. And this gives us our See how I would know. This gives us a basic um, peak to work with. Now, if we go back to our table, um, you can see that there are sort of four or five slots for each of the formants. And um, we're only going to be using the first four. You could use all five, but it seems to work pretty well with just the first four. And what we're going to do is create a filter for each of these um, settings. So I'm going to start off with. Uh, I think I'll start off with U at the bottom. So what we're going to do is create um, a bandpass filter at 350, one at 600, and one at 240. So we'll create, duplicate another few filters. And then if, if we go into our map mode again, what we want to do is assign these minimum values to the values on the table. And that'll be the values that we hit when our... Um, macro control is down and then we'll assign another set of values when our macro control is up and what this will do is then filter through from the say A frequencies to the O frequencies or the whatever file shines you're using so we're using U at the bottom so for our minimum hertz we're going to be using uh, 350, 600, 240 I'll try and remember those, 350 600, I think it was 2400, was it? Just check that again. 2400 and then 2675. 2675. The table also shows um, a gain volume for each of the frequencies. So 600 is minus 20, minus 32, and minus 28. So minus 20, minus 32, and minus 28. So go. We leave the first one at zero. Minus 20, minus 32, and minus 28. And now we should have a, a vial sound. And then what we're gonna do on the max side is use the table for A, so 600, 10, 40. 
600, 10, 40. 2250 and 2450. 2250 and 2450. And then we'll put in the gains as well. So we've got minus 7, minus 9, and minus 9. Minus 7, minus 9, and minus 9. So now we should have a filter. <coughs> There we go, it sounded pretty cool. One thing you can also do is if your filter sounds like it doesn't have a lot of bass, if you want to use it for a bass sound, um, you can add another chain and just add an auto filter on this. So we'll go through all our individual filters and hear what they sound like individually. And we'll not have to sign that to anything. So all together you get this nice filter. So we'll do the same process again just so you can see it a second time. So we'll turn this filter off. Just dump that. So create an auto filter. Sign it to band pass, put the queue right up full. We want to right click and oh no, we need to grip this first. So grip it into an effects rack. Right click and map to map the frequency to macro one and then map the gain to macro one. And the reason we're doing this first is when we copy the chains, it'll copy the settings for our maps. So if we were to create all our filters first and then map them, it would just be a bit more work. Um, when you create an extra chain, or when you duplicate a chain, what it's doing is basically sending a series, seri or a parallel signal. So, um, basically, there's two signals getting the full um, saw wave and then processing them sort of separately, and then the outputs combined. It's not like it's parallel where one filter's feeding into the next one, so they're all sort of um, parallel and independent. So we'll duplicate this four times. And we'll go back to our table. And generally speaking, we always want to use the ah sound because it's the most open sort of sound. And um, so we can go from as to o's or wherever. And I'm using, there's a whole frequency table for um, sopranos, tenors, altos etc but I thought I'd use it for the bass because that's sort of where we're going to be using it most in sort of dubstep tracks or whatever so this one will go from say uh, A to I so an I yeah, yeah. so we'll start off with our I I think 250 1750 so we go into our map mode clear frequencies 250 1750, 2600 and 3050, 2600, 3050, and then we'll do our gains, minus 30, minus 16, minus 22, minus 30, minus 16, oh, hold on, I've done that wrong, the first one's always at zero, so it's the second one's minus 30, minus 16, and minus 22, I think. Yep. And then what we'll do is go to our A. So we need 610, 40. 
600, 1040. I think that was 2250, was it? 2250 and 2450. And then we'll do our gains. So we've got minus 7, minus 9, and minus 9. Minus 7, minus 9, and minus 9. So now again we should have a an A to I filter. Uh, why am I not getting any sound? Because none of them are turned on. <coughs> So there we go, we've got a, a nice A to I filter. And as I said, if you want to add a bit more bass to the sound, you can add another chain, and then just add an auto filter on it, just with a low pass. And that'll just give you a wee bit of bass. And then you can also go in and if you want to sort of gritty it up, you could try putting a redux on at the end. So there we go, that's how to create formant filters in Ableton. Um, hope this was useful. Um, I'll add a couple of the presets to the, the Tech Tips course pack um, that you can download. So check that out. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.